talking about all this, uh, you know, patty cake love. I'm not talking about a play game love. I'm talking about the true and living love that God gave us to have. It's a fruit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. No, we're not getting, uh, you know, shouting and bucking today. And I know I can do that. I know that God gave me a word to speak on love and forgiveness. That's what he told me tonight. He said, speak on love and forgiveness. Because I got that from that home going. That young lady, she was, she exuberant love and forgiveness. And so I was going to put it on my sermonette for Sunday. But, I, I, you know, I said, no, I didn't know I was going to minister today. But God said, that's what you're to minister, on love. 1 Peter 4 and 8, above all, love each other deeply. Why? Why, why should I love you deeply? Because love cover a multitude of sins. I know, I know that man did you wrong. I know that woman did you wrong. I know that for a fact, but still, after we regroup, you just got to still love. You got to. How do we love? We ask for forgiveness first. God, you, you know, you, when I realized that forgiveness was for me and not the other person, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, I had a whole different concept. Of forgiveness but I understand but love cover a multitude of sins a multitude Corinthians 13 13 and now these three things remain what faith what hope and love but the greatest is what absolutely the greatest oh I had faith because I believe that I was healed in the 80s 90s I've been in the hospital. Y'all know my testimony. I believe by the stripes of the Lord, I'm healed. I have faith. Faith is the substance being hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We walk by faith and not by sight. And hope, hope is great expectation. You know, the expectation that we have. But love, love is the greatest of all. Love. You know something? I want to be able to love my sister and my brother. I want to be able to love my daughter and my son. No matter what, I want to be able to love. I want to be able, I wish I could love a agape like God loves us. You know that agape love, that love that, you know, when you're a baby and how your mama puts you in your arm, the baby in the arms and just wrapped the baby up and cuddle with that baby. I know I did my grandkids like that. That's the kind of love I'm talking about here. That kind of love. That love get me excited. You know how you have your love for your daughter or your son? That kind of love I'm talking about. Colossians 3, 14. And over all these virtues, put on love. I want to put on love. And, and it says, which binds them all together in perfect unity. We got the, it's just like, bind, uh, you know, I got this um, electric blanket at home, and I get in and I just put it up over me, and I just be like, oh, God, I feel good. And I mean, it could be 100 degrees outside, and I still got on my, my electric donut, and then, because I got on the air conditioning in the house, and I said, I keep it on all year. <laughs> keep my blanket on my bed all year long. I, oh, I ain't lying. I do. But, you know, I, wanna, I want that kind of love to be bound around me. That's the kind of love. I, I want that kind of love from my friends. You know, we don't have that many friends. You can count your friends on one hand. I had a friend of 50 years that passed, and she was truly a friend. She, she loved me through the good and the bad, through the happy and the sad. That's the kind of friends I want. I want those kind of friends that be with me for life. Be with me. If I'm ugly, still love me because I repent. If I'm good, love me. If I'm not, whatever. Just love me. Love. I'm talking about God's love. I'm talking about 
I'm not talking about a husband and a wife love. I'm talking about God's love. That's more than a husband or wife, friends, or whoever. I loved my friend for 50 years. I loved her. Arita, Evangelist Arita. I loved her, but she went home to be with the Lord. Was I sad? Yeah. I'm still sad. But God loves me. He have an agape love for me. So now I'm going to talk about what God says about forgiveness and love. What does he say about that? We talked about the love God has for us. Now we're going to talk about the forgiveness and the love that he has for us. This is what he says. Be kind. This is Ephesians 4.32. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other just as Christ, God forgave you and me. Be kind and compassionate. Well, one thing about my daughter, Kania, she was actually born with compassion. She, when I got ill, she was six years old, she had the compassion to take care of me. And I believe, I know for a fact that she loved me. But God loved me even the more so because he healed me. And I thank God for that. But Kania was born with compassion. She still does for others. You know, I don't know if I was born with compassion or not because sometimes it's like, oh, I, well, I no, not me, you know. But, but, but Nene, she'll go right to it, and she'll do it. I'm like, oh, no, count me out. She like, you know, and, and that's the kind of compassion we're to have for one another. It says, be kind. Well, yeah, well, I kind of fail sometimes. Let's get honest. Let's get off. Let's be transparent. Let, let, let's show our wounds. We're not kind all the time. You know, we, we, we get mad. We get upset. We get upset with our spouses. We get upset with our children. We get upset with, we get upset, and that's all right. But we're to just be that example of being kind and compassionate. And if you don't have it, pray for it. Ask God. Ask God to give you that kindness. When you get, you know, I used to be mean. I just, I, just mean. Just, just, just back, at, back in the day, just, just going to be mean to be mean. I don't, I, don't under, I don't even understand it myself. Just mean. And, and, so, but I'm being transparent. We got some mean. We got some mean people. I'm not mean today, but back in the day, but we still got some mean saints today. You know, I'm like, uh, you know, coming to church and saying something to somebody, and they snapping like, snap, crackle, pop, and I'm like, okay, Lynn. And then I have to remember, be kind and compassionate. You know, loving those people and being their form. And, you know, speaking a kind word into their spirit and stuff. So that's where I'm at. Uh, I'm, I'm right there with it. I, I'm really trying to walk in Ephesians 4.32. Okay. This is one you might not like right here. I don't think you're going to like this because I kind of didn't like it when I read it. But it's still the word of God. Peter, uh, Matthew 18, 21, 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sinned against me? How many times? Seven? Eight? Two? I'm talking about in a day. Three, four, five. Nah, that's not what he said. I'm like, huh? What? Huh? I kept reading. What did he say? He said, Jesus answered Peter and said, I tell you, not seven times. Not even about no seven times. Although seven is the number of completion, but it's not seven times. 
is 77 times. <laughs> it's 77 times. How, 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 how am I going to forgive you 77 times a day? I don't know. But that's what the word of God say. It says, I'm going to read it again. Somebody make you mad and keep making you mad and keep making you mad and keep making you mad and looking at you crazy and keep making you mad and keep making you mad and keep making you mad. And Jesus said, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Now, come on, y'all. Y'all going to have to talk back to me on this one. Can you do that? Can you, are, are, are you at the place where you can forgive 77 times in one day? When the person keep doing the same thing, same thing, same thing, same. Huh? Come on, y'all talk back to me. Uh, huh? Well, that's good. Yeah, I'm trying too. But that's what the word of God say. And we have to be in the word of God. We have to know when to hold and to fold. We have to know these things because this is what the word requires, love and forgiveness. I love you, but can I forgive you? You know, uh, you know, I love my husband, but can I forgive him? I love my wife, but can I forgive her? Can I forgive her when she keeps doing stupid stuff every day? Or he, he's doing crazy stuff every single day? You know, when God gave me this message, it's about putting some, it's about doing self-examination. You know, can you love anyway? Can you love when somebody then did something and called you names and cussing you out? Can you still love them and they're connected to you? Are you gonna put up, are you gonna put some calls on them? Or what, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with that one? What you gonna do? Can you still love in spite of? Can you still love? I don't know. That's where we are, are at. We, we gotta be honest. I, I don't know. And if you fail, get, get back up. You know, I fell on that test, I fell, Lord Jesus. I know I go to Walmart sometime and I, ooh, Lord Jesus. You know, and, and we're tested each and every day. It's not a day that I wake up and I'm not tested. I can be in my own room, in my own bed, and here come the enemy calling me on the phone talking about, you know what, girl, this is what they said. What? <laughs> I'm like, huh? You know, and I know it's the enemy. I know it's the enemy from hell, you know, trying to buffer at me. But the devil is a liar. And the father of lies. It's no truth in the in the devil. And so we're going to walk with character and integrity. And we're going to do what God has tell, told us to do. Because Pastor Paul always talked about maturation. We're going the the where we're not mature at, that's what we're going to mature in. We're going to mature in these things. Now this is the this is the one for me that I had a hard time with. Matthew 6, 14. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. And you know something? You know, when I went over this today, it just brought back memories of my father. My father was an alcoholic. My father was very abusive. My father did some stuff. And guess what? I hated him. I hated him. Uh, you know, he shot at me when I was in my 20s. And I don't know what happened to the bullet, but it, 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 later I found out that the angel was there and didn't let it hit me. You know, he, he, he fought my mother. It was craziness. And I hated this man. My whole mission in life was to put a plan together to kill, to kill him. That, that was my plan. That was my whole mission. 
I woke up wanting to do something to him. I went to bed wanting to do something to him. I was plotting. And remember, I was, you know, I, this is from childhood. Because when you're in a house like that and you don't hear anything but fighting and cussing and arguing and this and that, it, it's rough. And I hated him. And another person I hated was my uncle. My uncle did some things, you know, as a young girl, he did some things to us, and I hated him. I really did. So when I got saved 43 years ago, over there at Christ Holy Temple, Pastor Mullen, and, and I got saved right up in there. And then she asked me a question. She said, you know, do you have any unforgiveness in your heart? And I said, oh, yeah. She said, well, you're going to have to release that. And I said, oh, no, no, no. I can't release it. And so she said, but, you, you know, she's sweet, talks sweet and nice and kind and compassionate. And she said, well, baby, you're going to have to release that to the Lord. But I didn't want to release it. I wanted to keep it. Because this man did all my cousins and myself and, and messed with us. I hated him. He was dead. And I told her, I said, I want to go wherever he is buried. Go, go in that casket, jerk him up, and kill him again. Just kill him. That's how much hatred I had in him because of the things that he had done to us. It took me years. It took me years to get through that one. But I found out that forgiveness was for me. And when I released that, I cast that care to the Lord years later. Now, say 43 years ago, I probably didn't release that to Jesus. I, I don't even remember, but I released that thing, cast it to the Lord. And it was just like a weight that lifted off of me. And even with my father, you know, I'm just like I said, I'm in my bedroom. Can stand this man. He's over there in that nursing facility. I was so happy he was in the nursing home. I didn't know what to do. Of course, me and Nene, we went out there to see him, and the girls, we went out there to see him and everything. Hey, Joe, how you doing? You know, uh, one of them kind of things. But as far as a love for a father, I never had that. I didn't want it the way he did us. He did my whole family like that. That's why I became the protector of the family. It, when he did something to my mother, I was, boy, you just don't know the kind of per person I used to be, for real. But I'm in my bedroom, and the Holy Spirit come and say, go get your father. I'm like, who, who's that talking to me? I knew it was the devil. He said, go get your father, the Holy Spirit. He said, his latter days will be better than his former. I said, well, I, what in the world? I called Charles. I said, Charles, Holy Spirit told me to go get daddy. He said, well, you know you hear the Holy Spirit, so you better go get him. So I told my best friend, I said, Rita, you know the Holy Spirit told me to go get my father. I said, that, that, that can't be the Holy Spirit. And she said, she said, but Linda, you tried to kill that man a thousand times. You could bring that man up in your house. <laughs> oh, God. I said, yeah, because the Lord said bring him up in the house. And take, he said his latter days will be better than his former. Now, I don't know what that meant, but I just obeyed. So I went to try to go get my daddy. And the, and the doctor was looking at me like I was crazy. He said, oh, no, you can't have him. He, he's, he's already, he's all right in here. I said, but the Lord told me to come and get him. He said, who? I said, the Lord told me to come and get my father. He said, no, 
He said, you, you, no, we can't release him like that. Because, you know, they had, they said he was crazy and all kind of stuff. I knew that man wasn't crazy. They said he was mental. There wasn't nothing wrong with him. Nothing. They said this and they said that. I came back and I asked him again. I said, the Lord told me to come and get my father. And he said, no. He kept saying no. He made an executive decision to say, no, you cannot get him. So I prayed about it. I went back. I said, no, Doc, the Lord told me to go get my fa- come get my father out of this place because he's not mental. He told me to bring him to my house and keep him there. He said, well, I tell you what, Miss Mitchell, I'll let you keep him for a weekend and see how that work out. Now, this is a man I hate. I don't know what I would have you know, I was thinking some stuff, but it didn't go that way. And I went and got him for the weekend. Man, something happened. Well, I know what happened. The Holy Spirit happened. That man changed just like that. And guess what? I did too. And I went back to take him. And that Monday he called me and he said, I don't know what happened up in your house, but your father is a changed man. Come and get him. You can take him home. And I said, oh, my God. Hallelujah. I'm saying all this to say that even when I brought him home, I still had that feeling inside, you know, like, that rage feeling, like that feeling of, you know, he really did us wrong, and I really want to do something. But God wouldn't allow me, you know. But what God did do, he allowed me to redeem the time with my father. He allowed that to happen. He allowed me to really see when he shot at me, See, we hear me good and hear me by the Holy Spirit. When he shot at me, he was drunk. This man didn't even know he shot at me. And for years, I held on to that because I thought he knew. You shooting at me, brother, you, you, you know, I'm going, I'm going to really do something to you. And he didn't even know it. When I asked him about it, he was like, huh? What do you mean? You, you know, I, I don't remember that. And so we can put ourselves in, in bondage. For years, I was in bondage and chained for years, thinking this man knew that he shot at me. And he didn't know that. He didn't know. I, I had an alt with this man for years. Years. Up until he came to my home. And so when I realized that he didn't know, he didn't know, he had no idea. Gosh, I was like, man, I was behind bars all them years. I was, man, you mean to say I was in, I was in bondage. For all them years, and he didn't know nothing about what happened. And so you, so now that I know that God placed him there for us to redeem the time together and for me to love him. And in the end, I love the man. In the end, I really, really start loving my father. Because I start understanding that this man was sick. In his sick, he was an alcoholic. He was a, just an abuser. And he didn't, he don't even know he doing the things he do. Because when he's sober, he was sweet. You know, he was one of them drunks that when you drink, you're just ugly and nasty. But when you're sober, you're just as sweet as pie. And I call it two faces of daddy. The good and the bad. But 
for me, I was able to give all that to God. He allowed me to redeem the time with my father. And when he did pass, I kept my daddy eight years in my home. Eight years. Nene washed him. We had a schedule. We gave him everything he wanted. He, he was treated like a king over there. So I know somebody may be, may be in Facebook out there, part of our Facebook family, you are right here that you might have an alt against a person. And you don't know how and what to do and how to release it. But I'm telling you, if you ask God to help you, he will help you. Because if I didn't tell this testimony, nobody would know that I went through that. Nobody would know that as a seven-year-old kid, we got messed all up by a perverted uncle. Nobody knows that. And so when you go through stuff like that as kids, then you grow up and you have this defense mechanism. And you can't say nothing to me. The only thing you want to do is hurt people or do something because of your hurt. And we have to release that thing. We have to cast that care on the Lord. So I beseech you that whoever is going through anything, anything, ought of a mother or a father, ought of a son or a daughter, release that thing. Because if he could free me up, he could free anybody up. And I'm free. I'm free. Nobody can tell me anything about my freedom because I'm free. I'm not in bondage in any area of my life. And that's only because of God. You know, somebody asked me, can you forgive somebody when they're dead? I remember I, I had a class in here, and he said, I was a minister. He said, Minister Belinda, can you forgive somebody when they're dead and they did you wrong? I said, yes, sir, because forgiveness is for you, not for that other person. I said, because I did it. Yes, sir. Can you forgive your sister or your brother? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can. Can you? Yeah. I can put my bottom dollar on it. Yes, you can, because I did it. And like I said, if I can do it, anybody can do it. But you got to want to. You got to want to be free. And I'm free. I'm free to love you. I'm free to love. I'm free to love. I'm free. I have a freedom that I can love. I mean, I went through a lot. But so, so what? Your tests become your testimony for your teachings. All the mess I went through, it became my message for my ministry. Because if you look at the word message, it's a mess in it. And that was me. But I knew when God chose me, he said, I'm going to choose this little girl out here acting a fool because she's doing everything she want to do for the enemy. Everything back in the day. Everything. I wasn't scared to do anything. Anything. Strapped. Doing everything. Yeah. You're going to have a Damascus Road experience. Little bitty girl. And I had one. I haven't turned back. Looked back. Nothing back. Now, have I been perfect? No. But I'm working toward perfection each and every day. Each and every day. And so this is a love message. A love message from God for you guys. Facebook family. It's a love message for you. If you have an alt, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, as God has forgiven you, you forgive. Because who do you think you are? 
you just just as crazy too. Just as crazy as you want to be. And I know I was. See, it, it, the thing about me, and the thing about why these young ladies right here like me and love me is because I'm transparent. I show them my wounds, and I tell them, I got them, but I know how to come up out of it. I'm not going to stay in this mess at all. I went through it, came out of it, and I got a testimony to tell you what God can bring you out of. And I know it because, like I said, I didn't have the best of childhood. I was born hearing somebody fussing and fighting and arguing in the house. I don't remember nothing else but that. You know, people say, you know, I, 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 I don't, my daddy, my, my daddy, I didn't have a daddy's love. And the ones that do, cherish it. The ones that have a mother's love, cherish it. Because one thing I wanted to do was be a good mother for my daughter. And I was, and still am. Good mo I wanted to love her, the love that I didn't get. And see, the thing about when, you, when you're in a chaotic home like that, your, your mother don't know what to do because she's, she's getting fighting, you know, being abused. So she don't know what to do. And you know, back in the day when mamas got abused, they didn't do, it wasn't like this, what they do today. It wasn't like it at all. So, because nowadays, if somebody try to abuse one of these mamas, oh my God, y'all would have the whole house on the next block because y'all would kick the men out and do all kind of stuff. But it wasn't like that back then. And so, we forgive. We forgive and keep on moving. Forgive and keep on moving. What time is it? 7.41. Well, you know something? I'm getting ready to wrap this thing right on up so we can get on out of here. But I have some more scriptures. I'll give it to you afterwards. But my main, my main heartbeat is this. If you have an alt, if you cannot forgive, cast it to the Lord. I know people make us mad. I, I, I just got some news the other day that baffled me. I'm like, what? Is it, it, what? This thing is crazy. But I got to release it and keep it moving. You know, I, tell, I, tell, my, I tell my ladies, don't look at people sideways. We, we, we're not going to do that no more. Because we can look, I know I can. I look at you sideways and keep it moving. I'm looking at you like you crazy. But I don't do that no more. Can't afford to. Because as soon as I look at you sideways, oh, is that Elder Belinda looking at somebody side? No, I can't do I can't do that. I got to be a woman of integrity, a woman of character, and a woman of excellence. I have to be an example. And that's who I am. And that's what I'll continue to be. So I'm going to wrap this up like this before we do the offering. What is God's love quote? How does he love us? Though we are incomplete. Ryan, do you have that up there? No. Huh? Though we are incomplete, God loves us completely though we and you can put your name right there though Belinda you know though we are imperfect he loves us perfectly though we may feel lost and without compass God loves encompass us completely he loves every one of us even those who are flawed come on somebody even those who have been rejected come on y'all talk back to me 
those that are awkward, like, oh, God, he's just, uh, they awkward. Even those that are sorrowful, even those that are broken, even those that are incomplete, even those that are overwhelmed, even those that are defeated and damaged, God loves us. He loves us completely. And I thank God that he looked beyond my flaws and my brokenness and my rejection and my sorrow and my craziness. I thank God that he looked beyond that and, and said, I see a woman of God in there. I see a Naomi because he knew that Ruth was going to need a Naomi. He knew that my daughter Ruth was going to need a Naomi. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad he saw me. He saw me damaged. But he overlooked it because you know what? He sent his son, Jesus, to die for just not me but for you. He who had no sin became sin for who? For us. For the wretched ones like me. You can tell me I wasn't wretched and crazy. Had bodies and everything back in the day. But he took me. He made and molded me. Put the potter in the clay. Oh my God. Lord, I can go on and on about that. Jesus Christ, he is so good. He is better than good. He is, he is wonderful, magnificent, marvelous. He's a, he's a great God. He's a huge God. He's an everlasting God. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He's the beginning and the end of my story. Hallelujah. I thank God for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. A wretched wreck like me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to love my father before he died. Thank you. Thank you for Letting me forgive my uncle for doing those things. Thank you. Thank you. I can't thank you enough, Lord. And you think I'm going to act a fool and get out of character for you? Not so. Not so. I'm going to be a bad sister in Christ Jesus. Because guess what? I know who I am, and I know who I belong to. And I thank God for Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's love for us. So we're going to go right into our giving. We're going to go right into our giving. And I know Ryan will put um, everything up on the screen, how we can give by Cash App. Give by Cash App, Facebook family. If you want to give, you can bring it up here. You credit cards. Deuteronomy 1 and 11 says, May the Lord thy God, your Father, increase you a thousandfold as he has promised. He will increase you. He, he increased me. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm increased. And guess what? We're going to be increasing, increasing babies. We're going to do for Christmas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for you guys. I thank God for you guys. I thank God for his love for all of us. And I thank God for my spiritual daughters coming out to support me on tonight. Mr. Fowler, Minister Deaconess Fowler and Deaconess Mildred and the elders and ministers. Deacon uh, Taylor and everybody. The beautiful boys are here. <laughs> Where your daddy at work? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Cal, Minister Cal. Everybody that's out today. Everybody. 
I appreciate you coming out to support me. And uh, I hope this word penetrates your spirit and just release something if you're holding it. And just release it to God. He said, cast those cares upon him. Why? Because he loves you. May all that is Hallelujah. Come on up. Anybody want to give, just come on up. Thank you. You can give Facebook family. You can give Cash App. Let me let me pray one more. Father, I thank you for the give the giver and to give. Father God, bless them. Bless them above all they can ever even think. Bless them exceedingly abundantly above all they can think according to the power of the work that's in them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Amen, everybody. All right. All minds clear? Everybody clear of mind? Well, we're going to get on out of here. I think we, what time is it? We got out of here at a good time. I believe. So um, oh, this concludes our Wednesday night Bible class. And stay encouraged and be loved by the Lord.